Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you uh, to the Commissioner for his uh, comments and to Brad as well for his inspiration. Nokia is both uh, a major inventor uh, and a licensee, licensee of other companies' technologies, so I am very pleased to have a chance to be part of this conversation today. And let me start by saying that we welcome uh, the IP action plan of the European Commission uh, and the fact that it acknowledges that standards uh, play a crucial role in the development of 5G and the Internet of Things. I think the industry uh, can do a better job uh, in coming together to find solutions around standard essential patterns. We uh, at Nokia uh, try to do our very best, we try very hard, uh, but recently we have also faced some resistance from other companies who have not been uh, that willing to collaborate. But we uh, remain open to new ideas and also very much look forward to working with the Commission. But now we are here to talk about IP and let me first speak very briefly about the big picture. So 2020, uh, I'm sure, will be remembered for uh, other things, but in the future, when we will look back. So I believe we will see year 2020 as the start of the 5G decade. A year when connectivity technologies continue to transform the way we live and work. Uh, the year when 5G became mainstream, fueling economic growth enabling digital healthcare and helping to address climate change. And so while I'm very passionate about protecting and monetizing Nokia, Nokia's intellectual property, I'm also very proud of the role that our inventions play in powering the next wave of digital revolution. Nokia is a leader in 5G, offering a comprehensive portfolio of network equipment, software, services and licensing opportunities across the globe. We are also a pioneer and a major contributor to cellular standout, standards. With our patented inventions and other contributions to open standards by other inventors, you wouldn't be able to make a phone call or stream videos like this. Uh, a connected car wouldn't be able to automatically alert emergency services in the event of, event of a car crash. Remote healthcare or remote learning wouldn't be possible. For more than 20 years, Nokia has defined many of the fundamental technologies used virtually in all mobile devices and taken a leadership role in standard setting, investing around 130 billion euros in R&D and contributing much of that technology into open standards. As a result, uh, we today hold one of the world's strongest patent portfolios of connectivity technologies with around 20,000 patent families, of which over 3,800 are cellular standard essential patents. And we continue to invest. Uh, in 2019 alone, Nokia invested around 4.4 billion euros in R&D. And as a confirmation of our leadership in this space, which is recently uh, were found uh, by PA Consulting, an independent research firm, to uh, be the number one uh, patent holder uh, of patents uh, found to be essential for the 5G standard. So we share these technologies that we contribute to open standards with others through licensing. Uh, in total, across all of our programs, we have around 200 licensees. We support licensees, licensing of standard essential patents on fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory terms. This enables Nokia and other inventors to contribute our cutting-edge cellular technologies into open standards. And other companies can then license and use these technologies without the need to make their own substantial investments in R&D. In the era of IoT, this brings significant benefits uh, for many, many companies. In practice, whole industries uh, relying on connectivity are built on the back of the investments and inventions made by Nokia and others in this space. 
So I strongly believe that the legal and policy framework around standard essential patents must both incentivize inventors, but also provide predictability to companies that license the use of other organizations' inventions. I also believe that FRAND commitments need to have a real meaning, uh, and we strive to take a balanced view. This means that we ask for a fair royalty uh, that is sustainable for the industry, uh, but also uh, take the view that the negotiation process needs to be fair. And I'll come to speak about litigation in a moment, but I'd like to stress that litigation is always our last resort. Negotiation is our primary approach to licensing, uh, and the vast majority of our agreements uh, are concluded amicably. So let me now turn to our dispute with uh, Daimler. Our commercial dispute with Daimler and their suppliers concerns the unauthorized use of Nokia's connectivity technology in Daimler's connected cars. The communication standards used by automotive industry are the same, same as those used by uh, the, the smartphones and availability of cellular connectivity technologies brings significant benefits to drivers and the car companies. So we established an automotive licensing program back in 2015. And when we did this, we worked very hard to listen to the needs of the industry and created a program that best suited their needs. We approached automotive OEMs and offered a license for our cellular portfolio. This model followed the established practices used in the licensing of smartphones, where the license is granted for the final uh, complete end product, being the phone or the car, uh, that implements all the features and inventions in the standard. In this model, while the license is granted on the final level in the value chain, meaning the car as opposed to the components in the car, the entire value chain, including the components, gets access to the standardized technologies through so-called have-made rights that are rights for the car maker to use standard compliant components in the connected car. So we started with this offer, but also listened to feedback. Some of the OEMs like Daimler wanted their suppliers to take the licenses instead of the car maker. So we went back to the drawing board and created an offer that allowed the tier one suppliers to take the licenses instead of the OEMs. Some car makers wanted to have a collective licensing solution in the form of a pool. So we made our cellular SCPs available through the Avanchi patent pool, again showing willingness to be flexible. So in summary, we have three offers available that stand open for licenses today a direct license to the car makers, a direct license to the tier one suppliers, and a license to Nokia's portfolio as part of the offering of the Avanchi pool. And I'm pleased to report that many automotive brands, including strong brands such as Audi, BMW, Volkswagen, and Volvo, have been willing to agree to licenses, uh, uh, showing that they have viewed our approach to be fair. Daimler, in this regard, has been an exception. After we made these three offers available and approached Daimler and its suppliers seeking amicable negotiations, they filed uh, complaints with the European Commission, alleging that Nokia was refusing to license its standard essential patents, which obviously was not true, uh, given that uh, Nokia had made these offers available, including the offers to the suppliers. In, par in parallel, they uh, refused to agree to take a license from Nokia, and also their suppliers refused to agree to licenses, and both refrained from making offers. So we were faced with a wall of unwilling behavior by both Daimler and its suppliers, leaving us uh, with no choice but to sue Daimler in Germany for patent infringement with several of our patents. The regional courts in Mannheim and Munich ruled fully in our favor or earlier this year. Both courts found that Nokia has acted fairly and not abusively, and that fair offers have been made available. 
and that Daimler was using Nokia's patents without authorization and has clearly been unwilling to engage uh, in discussions. The Munich court also found that not only Daimler but also its suppliers have been unwilling to take licenses or fair terms. So both courts uh, issued an injunction against Daimler and these cases are currently uh, with the appeals court. Last week, uh, the court in Dusseldorf found that Daimler is infringing Nokia's patents, the third court now in Germany, but decided to suspend those proceedings uh, while it seeks clarification from the European Court of Justice on a number of legal questions. So while these questions raised by the Dusseldorf court, in particular with the Daimler or its supplier should take the license, are interesting uh, academic questions, I doubt whether this referral will actually help to resolve our commercial dispute, given that fair offers are overly available to Daimler and its suppliers. So, in conclusion, with the findings from all of these three courts, uh, it is now crystal clear that Daimler's cars use Nokia's inventions and that they need a license. And despite of this referral, the question is merely now that who agrees to these licenses, whether it's Daimler or its tier one suppliers, and when do they agree? Our offers remain open on the terms confirmed fair by the courts, uh, and they are open to Daimler as well as the tier one uh, suppliers. My message to industrial companies is that I think that the whole industry and consumers would be far better served if companies work together and focused on their efforts on bringing innovation to cons consumers rather than fighting in courts. So I invite my colleagues to come to negotiation table and negotiate in good faith, and we promise to do the same. I really hope that Daimler moves to do the right thing and agrees on a license uh, promptly. And my message to the competition authorities and courts is as follows. I think that competition laws have an important role to play in protecting consumers and addressing severe anti-competitive behaviors. But fair attempts by innovators to collect royalties on fran terms from unwilling licenses are not such situations. The rules that already exist today from previous referrals to the European Court of Justice make this very clear and I don't think that we should allow competition laws to be misused as a tool in commercial disputes. It is also important to note that very often those who resist licensing uh, the most are some of the most powerful companies in the world and use their market power against their suppliers and inventors. And when I look at the matter from the competition law point of or competition point of view, I do think that it would be a healthier outcome for the industry if the end product manufacturer who gets the most profits from using these technologies at least took part in sharing the fair royalty cost instead of forcing that cost burden solely to its suppliers. So I hope the Commission uh, rejects the complaints filed against Nokia, not closing a file when the standard essential patent holder has clearly and demonstrably followed through its obligations under EU laws, reduces legal certainty and sends a wrong signal to the IPR community. One final point which I want to be very clear about, our aim is not to stop the sales of Daimler's cars. We want as many car companies as possible to be able to share the benefits of connected driving with customers. All we ask for is a fair reward for the use of our technologies. This will help to fund future research in 5G, 6G and beyond. Thank you for listening.